drive? No, nah, come in the front. Oh, I got two more drives. Oh, yeah, Where's the baby? Come on, Mom. Oh, shit. Sure. There's no school tomorrow. Oh, yeah, Three Kings Day. Yep. I forgot. What are you doing? You're gonna choke me out with some perfume? No, it's hairspray. Oh. Uh, Aquanet? Can't you. <laughs> this is my pilot episode. Is it? Yeah. Alright. You see my thing? This yeah. is the Mr. New Haven show. You get to be on the first episode. How do you feel about that? I feel real good. Real good, like what? Like um, honored. <laughs> yeah. Let me see. I should I should fix that a little bit, right? Now yeah. we're about fifty fifty, right? A little yeah. more this way. Do you want to do on oh, East Haven? Yeah, if you want. Uh, yeah. Oh, I gotta pick that up. Why you don't like the Hamden? Nah, I'll be too packed. I think they're all gonna be packed today. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of traffic everywhere. Is there? How how did I get cut off by two? Two um CT transit buses, just driving like assholes. I'm in the on them. I'm in the right lane with everybody else, and they go around everybody and cut everybody off. How almost got hot, hit by a cop over here? A cop? Yeah. When? Like 20 minutes ago. Why? What were you doing? Oh, Jaywalking. Nope, I wasn't. He wasn't. He was. He was using his authority and going through lights and stuff. You know how that goes. Yeah. Screw. So, Mr. New Haven, huh? Mr. New Haven. What's what's this about? Oh, it's just about the regular everyday life in New Haven. The people that live there, what it's like. You know, I figure we ain't gonna be here forever. No, that's very smart. So you gotta leave your legacy. And, you know, maybe 100, 200 years from now, people will look up these videos and see what life was like back then. Or grandkids or something, you know what I mean? Yeah. You got a daughter, you might have a couple great, great grandchildren. I will say it's, it's definitely going to be hard to raise a child in this generation. Yeah, right. Like life is going to be, it's going downhill, you know. I remember, you know, back in the early 90s, don't get me wrong, life was always crazy. There was always a possibility of anything, but, you know, just in the early 90s, you know, we were all friends. We would all hang out with each other, we were able to hang out on a block. You know, the, the people that are now killing each other, we were once playing fucking manhunt with. You know what I mean? We're once playing tag, but, and then I'm talking about the hood too. You know, like just playing it though. And now they're now they're doing it in real life. In real life. Like we were sitting down playing playing Need for Speed, and now they're doing it in real life. In real life, everything you know, and it's just it's crazy to see New Haven and transform it in such a different way. You know, it's, it's supposed to be progressing, but it definitely went downhill. Especially New Haven, Fair Haven recently is just, you see nothing on, on, on Facebook, but pray for your people in Fair Haven, pray for Fair Haven, it's going downhill, and I'm like, Fair Haven wasn't always the best, but you know, at one point it was definitely more oriented in, in, in solitude with family and friends, and it's just, like I said, the same friends who were playing together, manhunt and hanging out, and then come knocking on the door to see if you're home, saying who was killing each other. Mm. And, and half the time there's really really no particular reason to kill each other and, and if it is I, I hate to say or dictate anybody's situation or scenario but it's something stupid so you think it's just getting, it's just getting worse it's getting worse of course it's definitely getting worse between you know everybody's like they say oh the drugs They're like no the drugs been out here yeah but it wasn't as bad as it is now you know it's everybody that I know my age is you see them and they're on the street and you know, you know what what happened in life you know and, and this neighborhood to bring it down like that so what do you think it is um you think it's this next generation coming up is just bad just yeah, that they're, they're, they're not raised the misguided. same misguided misguided yeah very misguided a lot of broken families with all mom and yeah, dad yeah absolutely you know i'm not saying that families were um set and stolen back in the day but it definitely was more concurrent with families in the 
household and rules and, and punishment and as the next generation went on, I think they let go of that. You know, the sense of time frames, bed times, rules, chores, you know, punishment, none of that. getting don't in trouble. To, none, no kids have to do none of that none anymore. No. Why is that? Isn't that mommy and daddy's fool? Or, or if it's a single parent, isn't it mommy's fool? For because like there's a lot of broken families that now still have yeah. that could still raise a child. Like a single mom or a, even a single dad can still raise a child. Oh, of course. So, but so so like what's what's wrong? I think. Um, Why is it coming out different? Because yeah, I agree, it's it's definitely going downhill. It's definitely. I want to say I was born in '91. Um, and I want to say the generation before me, and I hate to say it, like this is two generations before me. The, the second ahead is the ones that were strict, the rules, this, that. The, the next generation ahead of me, maybe I'm 30, but one, two. I want to say those in their 40s. Who, like your grandparents, you're saying? Now I'm talking about, I'm talking about ones that were uh, in their 40s now. 40s, close to mid 40s, 50s. You know, they're kind of lost their way in parenting. You know, they, they should have been because they were the next step closest to punishment. They were the next step closest to the rules that we had. And it's kind of like, it's almost like I got lazy along the way. So you think the ass whooping stopped? Ass whooping. I mean, I don't want to say ass whooping per se, but yeah, ass whooping. Standards. Ass whooping stops. Yeah, man. They did. Fucking rules. Rules. Regulations. You know, everything is just kind of like... You know, instead of instead of you know reprimanding the kid and talking to them, it's just I right, just go play your fucking game, go go in the room, go fucking you know what I mean? That's what it is. That's punishment now. Go play your game. Parenting laziness. Go play your game. Get out my face so they don't have to sit there and, and really take the time to acknowledge a scenario to to, to make it better. So so now we're in a generation of go this, go that, and it's like not what they did wrong or not what they should have done better. Saying they caught up to us. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And then as the generations go on even more, now it's you know the next generation of younger kids having kids, and their kids are young now, and it's like you know you see these. Um, for example, you know I'm, I'm outside on in, in Cedar Hill, and the little kids out there know me, they respect me. But it, you know when I first moved out there like three years ago, sitting outside, you know just enjoying a nice hot summer day, and I want to see little girls. My daughter's nine. I would say little girls eight, nine years old, my daughter's age. Now, mind you, I'm not judging. Back in the day, maybe would I have let my daughter went and ride the bike outside. Mm -hmm. Now, absolutely not. She can't even go outside to the front step for the bus without me. Mm. But um, you know, is it different? Thing is just different because, because you know, you're you're that mom now. Yeah. So you have a different perspective. Yeah, and and I know the world's different when it comes to drug addicts and kidnapping and, and rape and and that's always there, but it's worse. But I will say, I had an eight year old and. A bunch of eight-year-olds drive past me on the bicycle one day, and I hear them saying, fuck you, bitch, fuck you, bitch, suck my pussy, suck a dick, shove a dick down your throat. And then I'm like, yo, what's wrong with y'all? And they laugh, and I'm like, nah, come over here. And they ride their bike over. Now, mind you, this is me with the, with the chance of them going home telling their mom and, you know, possible drama, yo, what you talking to my kids for? But I didn't care, because I'm like, why y'all talking like that? They're like, I don't know. And I'm like, your mom know you're talking like that? Yeah. And I'm like, I probably wouldn't even doubt it. Huh. You know what I mean? I probably wouldn't even doubt it at all. It's, it's so how do we change that? How do we fix that? How do we make that better? How do we reverse it? If we're going downhill, we want to go back to morals and getting better. And it's a slow process, but how does that process It's a begin? slow process, but it all started <clears throat> with electronics. Mm. It started with um, the opportunity for robots to raise our children for us. Computers and Computers robots. Computers and games and robots and, and you know, it's, it's become a sense of second parenting, almost first parenting for some. I grew up on Super Mario Brothers. Yeah, but you also grew up on that. I was getting in trouble too. Sure did. Right so that was that borderline generation, the last one. Yeah. Gonna be on this side? Um, I'll park probably over there. Okay. Ooh. All right, that was my first little pilot. Quick ride to the store. And I'll talk to you later. Don't forget, this is the Mr. New Haven show.
and I'm Mr. New Haven. Talk to you later. And hey, we're back. Oh, <laughs> uh, we're back. I think I did that right. That was our first. That was our first little pilot segment right there ever mm -hmm. for the Mr. New Haven show. Mm -hmm. That was your word from our sponsor. That was in the break. We're gonna edit that later. Uh, you're done shopping at the store. Yes, sir. And uh, it's helpful. You're hard welcome. not having a car. It is hard having a car. Let me tell <laughs> <Yeah>. you. <laughs> the grass is not that much greener. Yeah. So I have a so I have another question I was thinking about. Yeah, tell me. I have you know. It's probably about a ten minute ride. It's a really fast. I think I want to do a long. I want to try to do you know. I really want to get into the interviews. I want to talk to some local celebrities and stuff like that. Yeah. Some leaders, some church leaders, some internet. Well, that's smart. Influencers. That's smart. I know some some pizza connoisseurs in the city of New mm -hmm. Haven. I'm sure you don't know. At one point, weren't you doing something? I was doing some stuff. I know some people. We yeah. can call some people up and say, hey, you know. Yeah. I got some questions for you. We're gonna mm -hmm. just we're just gonna we're just gonna chop it up, man, and talk. That's all. But so the first question we're talking about, you know, how New Haven's going down. But so I want to ask. I want to focus on. I think it's, it might be more of a personal. This this doesn't really have anything to do with the city. I mean, okay. it could be part of the city. It could be part of part of making the city better. Yep. Like just better vibes and stuff like that. We're all good mm -hmm. people, but. But you personally is my question. Because like I said, we ain't gonna be here forever. Yeah. This is our life. This is it. This is our time right now on record. This is it. Yeah. So what are you how do you live your life? What do you do for fun? How do you enjoy yourself? How do you make sure and this is multiple questions, yeah. if you wanna mush them all together if you want, or if you want to answer them separately. Okay. How do you make sure that that like in perspective when you're old in the hospital bed and you look back and you say man i did my best i lived my life when you're looking back and, and you're gonna say well when you're looking back what did you do that's my question okay that's how did good, you live your life that's a good question and it's i can only answer up to 31 years because right. in the next 20 years i could do something more significant or more worse well you know? what are you planning to do in the so, next so so what next i can tell you I, I can tell you and this is a personal but um i have a nine-year-old with cancer Mm. And um, the past nine years have been um, nothing but experiments and treatments and guessing. And, and my daughter's kind of like a lab rat and new cancers and, and what may you. And, and, and I'm, I'm highly sustained in the medical field. You know, I, I was a PCA, um, started off at the Veterans Hospital, and then I was at Yale Hospital. And then I, I accomplished myself with um, an EMT certificate. However, when coronavirus happened, I'll get to the point, but this is me personally. So when coronavirus happened, um, with having a child with I should stop wiggling. Take your time, something man. called activated P13K Delta, um, I wasn't able to work. So that, I mean, that explains to you my two different things that I did. So before coronavirus and, and being able to work I did I did a lot of things um, my main factor let's not even talk financial let's talk um, in the household let's talk little things like as far as I talk to my daughter because we're talking about New Haven going up and the difference and, and what's going on so what I do with my daughter in my household um, I have like I said I have a nine-year-old that's the only child I have I you know I don't we don't curse around her and I'm not saying I'm better or worse than anybody um, even down to music I know it sounds corny but this is my personal personal perspective certain songs certain music don't get me wrong i listen to trap music but you know when my kids are around I, I try to defrain that from i try to you know put that a little bit off the chain um for fun at home there's little so things. you do think it's just like you think it's do you think that's just because no i don't want to say old but you're older now now you have the mm -hmm. mom perspective mm -hmm. you would like you would call your mom and your grandma old though you're just yeah. old that's why you don't want to listen i don't to think it's an old perspective. now it's just be flipped because it, now you ain't, old... you ain't the baby anymore now you're the mom and yeah you're... but that doesn't stop a lot of people it doesn't help a lot of people wake up you know what i'm saying it, it takes something significant my situation is different because but personal. do you contribute your censoring to music on the fact that you're the mom now absolutely so now absolutely. you just walked in her shoes and now you know. Yeah, absolutely. Down to things I say around her. Um, I'm a big fan of, which is, this is a big, this is a big problem with our generation is um, a lot of these children are in dope conversations. A lot of these children hear a lot of shit they should not be hearing. 
and that's that's also a big fact and I know that for a fact so like, what would you do you tell them to go go in your room and watch TV or or just not talk in front of the children not talk in front of the children that's what you do like the setup. old saying children are to be seen and not heard yeah you but know children I mean? shouldn't even be seen you know what, what it all depends on the flow of the situation you know what I mean if you have some friends hangover whatever you know you can still be a girl drink smoke whatever you know the kids are supposed to be kids and it does that's that is a time where you are to utilize if we're gonna have electronics and games and stuff that would be a proper timing as a retrospect as retrospect to the fact of oh um, I don't want to recommend you. I don't want to deal with you. Go play. That's just a big difference. You know, it's kind of like, all right, the, girl, the adults are hanging out. You know, you got toys. You got this. You know, you like your games. Go play for a little bit. We'll come back to you. So that is a proper timing. If you were to shun your kids off into a game system or something, it is. It's proper timing. But, you know, a lot of these grown-ups have the kids run around the house. And, you know, so-and-so did this. You know, so-and-so did that. So now these kids are hearing about, like I said, I had an eight-year-old talking about sucking, you know, D-I-C-K. And I'm like, you know, how does she know that? She doesn't know that from other eight-year-olds. Mm. She knows that's from ad adults talking around her. These kids know these things because they're too, they're too uncensored. Okay, like, all right, all right. Between music, between what you speak around them, between what you're doing around and them. What about you? How are you going to live your life? Um, How are you going to enjoy your life I'm and gonna, make the most of it? I'm going to enjoy my life and make the most out of it by trying my best, trying hard. Um, I do have some old school standards in me of respect, uh, appreciation. Um, I do in here that my daughter appreciation, you know, with with just appreciation itself. And you say appreciation for what? That's not what it's about. Appreciation itself, not for what. Appreciation in a whole is is what can make life better. It makes it makes things um, the bit easier. Little things like, for example, in my household, what me and my daughter do for fun in the summertime. I try if I don't have a mobile um you know i have them that do but I, I do little dumb things i look for free events i look for you know i pay for stuff too but i look for free events free fairs water parks you know in the household if you go in my daughter's room i'm big on arts and crafts you know i'm big on just doing little dumb things beads bracelets you know little sewing i taught my daughter how to sew you know what i mean uh, my daughter knows how to sew um you know, it, it all stems down to old school standards because you know this is all stuff that we had as a child. We didn't have TVs and electronics. We had the little games. We had the little jewelry kits. We had the little, you know, make a poly pocket or whatever. So, you know, I try to go off. So it sounds like to me what you're saying is you spend quality time with your daughter. Absolutely. That's important. Absolutely. That's what you want to make. And the non-quality time which means personal one-on-one -on -one is censored as well. My, non, my non-quality time, so when it's not just us one-on-one -on -one and it's a regular household, if, if I want to do this, that, and the third, or we're having conversations with music, my music in the house is either going to be, she has a little boom box still. <laughs> I try to buy things from like 1995, a little boom box, and I have her listen to 93.7 because it's censored. You know, or if I am going to use my, if I <laughs> Does it run on tapes? Does it get tapes? Yeah, it does have tapes, tapes yeah. <laughs> it was hard to find, but um... And, and if it's not the, the regular radio station for listening to music, I will put on Pandora and I'll put on a little, I'll put on one of her stations. So I alter to her. You know what I mean? Because she is what's supposed to be next. You got CDs? I do have CDs. I have DVD players still, too. I have a DVD. And <laughs> kind of I have cable, too, but what I want... What kind of CDs do you have? Um... Oh my god, my door won't let me take Michael Jackson out. Michael Jackson? Which one? Um... The one that has, um... You Are Not Alone... The Free Willy soundtrack? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> She has that in her CD player now. That's a nine-year-old. And mind you, I was very proud, and, and I'm not gloating or boasting or saying I'm better than others, but what nine-year-old wants to be fucking Michael Jackson for Halloween? Michael you know, Jackson is popular. But, you know, to know all his Why songs. Why she was Michael Jackson for Halloween? Yeah, man, she knows every single one of his songs. That's good stuff. You know what I mean? She loves Prince. You know what I mean? <laughs> My daughter's a big fan of Aretha Franklin, you know? I'm old school, so I listen to stuff like that. So it's it's sensory, you know. And I hate to say it, but it is all about what you do with your kid. Our kids are next. These kids, to put it in a hole, in a nutshell, these kids hear too much, they see too much, and they're involved in too much. And now they're bringing that to life. So now they're nine, ten, eleven. Suck dick, fuck you. Da -da. They're hearing about pregnancy. They're hearing about sex. You know. They're, and, and and I love you know Meg the Stallion. I love Nikki. But if you're too exposed to them now, now their body, their body idolizing the young girls. 
So now, now that's going to a whole different subject. You know what I mean? Because we went from New Haven and things, but the world is changing based on material, based on what we see, based on idolizing. We're growing into that. You know, guns and stuff became popular. Big butts and stuff became popular. Talking nasty, dressing. Now you, that's what you see in this young generation. Guns, sex appeal. Da, da, da. So that's it's it's based on what you see on the outside and the inside home. But the home is where it starts, and it's really not that hard. The home is where it starts. Yeah, it I is. I like that. No, you're right. So, and it's not that hard. I'm not saying be perfect. At all, by far, my same before. But still smoke a joint, still drink, still do whatever you do. Do it, do it, do it the right way. Take five minutes to get some shit together for the kid to play in the room. Mm. Don't just roll your J and then all right, go on, you know, get some mm. shit together, some crayons together, this, put a little pile, fucking draw area, and then go do your shit. Your girlfriend comes over to smoke, you out of the kitchen. Nah, go in the room and handle that. You know what I mean? So it starts at home. It's just little things like centering these fucking children. And, and I don't even call. I don't cuss around my daughter. You know what I mean? One I might would have never guessed that. One might slip out here and there. You know what I mean? I'm like, oh, I shit. Never yeah. <laughs> but I, I, I cuss like a fucking sailor. But around my daughter, like I said, and even that too, I talk to my daughter, you know, and that's another thing. You got to talk to these kids. I don't talk to her like a girl. Don't forget, I'm not right here, right? I'm going to go around the yeah. block for Don't you. forget, I, I don't want to say I talk to her like an adult, but I don't baby her. I let her know what's up. Send just so you know, you hear mommy cussing and stuff. You know, this is not that's not cool to do that and stuff. If you hear what other people do, I, I also make sure she knows what she sees other people doing. It's okay to be yourself, you know. I talked it's it's so many things that, that factor into it along with centering them. Um this is just me personally as far as upbuilding my daughter. I lift her up. You're beautiful. You know, you hear the kids say shit and stuff you wanna say, yeah, I get it. But you know, make sure you make sure do you know what's cooler being a leader. Like, hey guys, shit is stupid. That's a stupid ass word. That's a shitty word. She is shitty, we're gonna make a joke out of it. You know, I try to make sure my daughter knows it's okay to be different, it's okay to be the leader. Let these kids know, like, I, you know, this, that, but no, I, I don't, I try be my different. best. Don't, don't yeah, I try my, I try my like best. Yeah, man, I try my best to let her know that. And, and little sensory things, just a little, stop cursing around them, or even, you know, fuck it, curse around them. That's okay. I had that. But the, the extra shit. Because we know, we know we're young. We know we're going to be talking shit. Did you know so and so and Did you know so did this? You know so and so's on crack? You know, you know these kids hear this shit. You know, did you see Ashley? She's on crack. You don't know, you know, realize little things you see. These kids are hearing crack, drugs, you know, sex, whatever. And then they're taking this with them. Now they're going into teenagers and that's all they know. I'll wait for you, right? No, it's fine. Yeah, I'm going, I'm going, got up, some heavy stuff I'm going upstairs into her sister house. Oh, all right. This is a little right upstairs. All right. Well, that's the end of my first guest, the Mr. New Haven Show. I'll be back on. I have a lot more to say. The Mr. New Haven Show. <laughs> we'll have some questions prepped next time. Yes. But, but you were you were a pleasure, man. Thank, Thank you. you. You really kept it going, I man. appreciate Thank you. you. Thank you very much. I do have a lot to talk about. <laughs> she sure does. <laughs>